Uh, welcome from this uh, new release of Zen Orchestra 5.92 for the February months. Uh, we're really happy to uh, you know, announce all the features we have. But now, uh, as we are doing almost like a tradition, we'll start with the project and community stuff related to Zen Orchestra, XCPNG, and the entire VAITS community. So um, let's quickly talk about popularity. And that's, uh, you know, cool to say that uh, we are more popular than ever. Um, we got a kind of, you know, good traction or momentum, uh, you know, due to the um, Brocom slash VMware acquisition, Exodus, or name it the way you want. But still, we have impressive numbers of, you know, people going to the forum, registering, asking for demos, and so on and so on. So that's great. And we welcome all those new person in our great community. Uh, if you want, you know, to interact with us, uh, feel free to post on the forum or to contact us on the VETS website, uh, vets.tech slash contact. Feel free. I will be happy to answer all your questions. And remember, what we do here is not just, you know, uh, being there when you need, when you have a problem, but also when you, when you need to plan your migration or deploying a new, you know, infrastructure and so on. So let us know. Moving on, on what's going on uh, around us and who is talking about us, like a new section called articles, podcasts, and videos. Um, we have many, uh, let's say, big software vendors or community podcasts and so on talking about us and how to migrate. So that's that's really cool. So I will let you, you know, explore those links if you want to have some ideas on the existing alternatives, because we are not the only ones, obviously. And as I, we always said, we are happy to have other open source alternatives. So feel free to take a look and, uh, you know, learn what's going on and, uh, you know, what's happening with this uh, entire migration from VMware to other alternatives. There's also, to um, let you know, some interesting videos made by Tom from Lawrence System about how to start with Vates VMS, which is XCPNG plus Zen Orchestra, how to deal with networking, and how to deal with Windows VMs and VTPM. Uh, feel free to take a look. We also got a Two Guys Tech video about XCPNG versus ESXi, which is pretty interesting. And finally, um, if you are a Redditor, if you, you know, uh, like to be on Reddit, uh, just notice we already have a subreddit since a while, but now it tends to be more and more active in the last months. Uh, again, it's not a surprise due to the VMware thing, but still um, there's a place where there's more and more people. Obviously the forum still stays as the main uh, entry point, but you know, uh, it's fine also to, uh, to have uh, your own community in the place you know very well. Next thing is we are improving um, let's say our openness in a general sense. Uh, we started to announce it last month, but as some, you know, uh, let's say our cousin like Zen Server is closing more and more what they are doing, we are exactly doing the opposite. Um, so we try to improve our documentation on how to contribute to Zen Orchestra and for XCPG it's already done, but we wanted to be sure that it's, you know, really easy to do so. So we added a contributing.md file in the root folder of the GitHub repo. So you have all the thing you need to uh, learn how to help us could be, again, code, but documentation or, you know, report and so on. Contributing is pretty wide and even spreading the word about us is something really important. So uh, feel free to do so. Always happy to have, you know, new member of the community and ambassadors talking about our solution. And in the same spirit, I would say um, our design system is now public. So um, I, I introed that last month that we were preparing this, but now it's done. And the entire Figma design system is now publicly accessible. So you will take a look on kind of a sneak peek on the components that will be used in Exolite and Exo6, the next major revamp of the UI. And you will also discover the mad work required to get there because um, this is just, you know, the design system showing how each component has to be. That's the mock-up template, if you like. So there is a menu you can open and you could see um, we have all the buttons, fonts, inputs, loaders, scroll bars, cards, whatever. So it's pretty huge. Um, but you could take a look and it's all open. And if you have feedback, there's a block, um, sorry, a thread on our forum that uh, is there to discuss some question you might have about it. So yeah, it's another step being even more open than before. 
Our next topic is using Packer with XCPNG. If you wonder how to do so, if you want to build templates in a fully automated fashion with a, you know, something you can repeat without fearing breaking anything, you should read that article. It's, uh, it was contributed by a member of our community. So also, if you want to write uh, you know, a cool blog post about how you do this and that, please contact us. We'll be happy to put you uh, in the spotlight. But anyway, back to Packer. Um, this is really interesting because it could be used, obviously, uh, combined with Terraform if you want to you know, Terraform use those fresh created automated templates, or if you just want to get all the time uh, up-to-date templates. So that's a great uh, how-to. Feel free to take a look and read and try yourself. Uh, this is a really useful tool for automation. Still on XCPNG, we have the 8.3 beta 2 that is out. So there is a dedicated blog post about it. I won't go into all the details, but it's another milestone for um, a the next release we'll have that will be stable in a matter of months now. So soon, I would say, uh, but still beta 2 is here with many improvements. So feel free to visit the link and explore what's going on, what's next. Also new Zen version. So it's pretty exciting. So uh, take a look. And on the community and ecosystem, the last point is we will we'll be at the CloudFest 2024. So it's a European event in Germany. And it's a pretty big one. And basically, it's everyone, you know, hosting providers, MSPs, uh, or even companies who want to, you know, uh, check what's going on uh, in the uh, hardware world, software world related to server virtualization or not uh, markets uh, will be there. So if you want to meet us, uh, I will be personally there also. We'll have some people from the technical team too. So if you are around, uh, feel free to uh, to say hi. And if you want a ticket, by the way, because you can reach the event, just contact us through vates.tech slash contact. We can maybe, uh, you know, find a way to give you a free ticket if you're interested. So let me know. And for our uh, non-European friends, uh, be aware that we might go more, uh, for example, in the US uh, next year for more US events and so on. So uh, hang on or welcome to you. Uh, and we'll probably, you know, decide pretty soon which event we'll do next year in the US. And let's switch to the uh, contents of this new release of Zen Orchestra. So sorry for the long intro, but, uh, you know, there's many things to tell. Um, let's focus now on the features. So uh, starting with the backup, as we usually do since, I think, years now, backup is the first topic that we are covering in our release. And now we are announcing the backup retry. Um, it might sound trivial, but it wasn't. So basically, now when you create a backup job, you can uh, set the number of retries if one backup is failing. Uh, by the way, uh, the way it works is it will do all the VM backups, even those failing, it won't retry just now. It will wait for all the backup job to be done, and then it will retry the failed ones after in the end. Um, obviously, don't try to put a too big number of retry, two, three, four, it seems to be a sweet spot. Um, this will allow you to avoid transient failure in your network slash whatever happening in your VM. So it's pretty convenient, works pretty well. Um, so feel free to test it. It's available, obviously, in the latest channel for now and will be in stable next month. Um, we also improved on the backup side of things, the VHD loop detection. So um, we had some reports on minor issues with using mirror backup. So we uh, improved that and we refactor the code and it's faster and better now since we did that. So um, if you use mirror backup, which is great, by the way, if you're uh, not aware about it, it's the capability to backup a backup repository by itself, but with, for example, different schedule, retention and so on. So you could, I don't know, have a... a local backup in your data center, but have a S3 backup on, a, I don't know, whatever a storage provider with encryption and so on, and maybe keep it for, I don't know, six months, one year and so on. So that's really cool to use. So feel free to do so. Now it's even better. We are also releasing today a new XOA. So that's the Xenox Virtual Appliance. Um, the old one was built three years ago, so it was time to refresh it uh, because it was bundling 5.60 version of Xenox Istra. So, uh, you know, rather, rather old. Uh, but now it's, well, it's also on Debian 12. It was on 11. And also internally, uh, we built it with Packer ourselves. So uh, expect to have uh, more 
often release of XOA. If you want to migrate from an old one to a new one, we got a, a link to cover you. It's pretty easy. You export the config, import on the new, and you will run on it. The old one will continue to work for years, uh, but at some point, you will need to migrate. So if you have a question, open a ticket and ask us. Uh, no problem. Uh, feel free to do so. Moving on on the REST API. Um, so the REST API is now getting more and more traction. More and more people are using it, so that's fine. Uh, as a reminder, we also have a JSON uh, RPC API, but it's uh, not that easy to use. So we built a new one, and we basically ask people to tell us what they need. And so we have a dedicated forum section to do so. So again, if there are some features you require, let us know. And for those two new features that we released, it was asked by the community. So as you can see, uh, this is something we do. We listen to our users and we build things they are, that are needed. The first one is to get the all the users um, that um, all the groups that the users have and vice versa. So it's pretty simple. Um, you, re you request a user, you list all the groups that the user is inside, and you have a list of references of uh, the name of the group, but also the URL of the group. So you could make a request on it. And the opposite works. Uh, you can request a group and to list all the users inside it. Very simple, works out of the box, uh, and very useful if you want to get a report, for example, for your internal IT on you know, the users and so on. We also added a feature that is displaying if you are using SMT or hyper-threading. Um, uh, basically, some people want to know for the license reason inside their VMs, uh, if they are using you know, actual cores or threads and so on. So, Or for security reason, by the way, if you want to know if you disable uh, hyper-threading or, or not. Um, so now you could just make a request on uh, host slash host UID slash SMT and it will return enabled true or false. Simple, works pretty well. Um, also, we decided to improve the way it's done. Right now it's done with a plugin. So we made a contribution directly to the Zappy project upstream to get that information bundled into it so we can get rid of the plugin. So as you can see, we always want to contribute upstream to improve the entire platform uh, itself, not just via Zen Orchestra, but XCPNG and everything inside. Um, about X6 and XOLite, so there's many things to tell. Most of them are not visible, so I would enter into the detail, but in short, we continue to integrate all the components into something called Web Core. Web Core will be the shared library between XOLite and X6, so they could use the same components, but maybe in a different way with different parameters and so on. Um, so it's a lot of work, but it's moving pretty well, in fact. Um, there's also a collection system to you know, deal with the component behavior, uh, for example, the tree view, multi-select, tasks, subtasks, and so on. So we made a system to do it. So that's also a lot of work that is not visible yet, but that will be tremendously helpful when you actually have uh, the uh, UI released and you start to implement it. We also have a new tree view component that is made that will be available uh, in the next releases that we'll have for Exolite, and that will be also used in a better version in Exo6. I mean better because Exo6 will have to deal with many more things than just a single pool, so that's why the component could be extended with more features. Um, we have a new drop-down component that is detailed, a custom scroll bar, um, also improved how the color will work in what we call the color context, so that's how you build a UI basically. So we, you know, we are fully transparent and explain how we do that. So uh, feel free to, you know, uh, explore more in details all the challenge there is and how we are tackling them and building all the blocks needed to get uh, our products. Now the load balancer, uh, which is which has been partially uh, rewritten last month. Now we added a feature to exclude some VM from uh, the load balancer itself, VMs or hosts. So it's very convenient if you want to not use the load balancer for some dedicated resources. And now the MISC section where uh, we are talking about many different things. So this month we started to work on USB path through through the UI, it's not done yet, but you can already see the physical USB devices that are connected to your host into the host advanced view and enabled mean that this device is ready for USB path through. And next month, we'll have the entire feature in the UI. So uh, hang on. In the meantime, there's a documentation to do it with the CLI, but that should be the last time you need to do it through the CLI uh, because we'll have all the UI done next month. 
We also improve the uh, auto power on at pool level to be able to enable it. So it's a kind of a long story, but long story short, um, even if Zen Orchestra, when you enable auto power on on a VM, it will check that is enabled on the pool because if it's not, then it won't work. But we had the case where people imported Zen Orchestra appliance VM with auto power on, but it wasn't triggered on the pool itself. So now you got an error message or warning, let's say, telling you that uh, yes, power on is set on the VM, but not on the pool. So that will work. And now you can enable it on the pool directly. So that's a lot better. Moving on to robots. TXT. So uh, that's a file that you put in any web server to tell the uh, crawlers from Google and so on to not um, uh, register you, to not, uh, you know, fetch the content uh, that you have. So you won't be indexed on Google and so on. So that's important because you don't want Zen Orchestra uh, to be on Google and, you know, discovered this way. Uh, so by default, we got the robots.txt. If you want to remove it for whatever weird reason, let us know. There is a way to disable it in the configuration, but it should be left as a default. Also, remember, if you expose Zen Orchestra to the internet, that's fine. That's okay. We do that. But you need to always enable two-factor authentication or open ID Connect or something to be sure that a simple password won't be the only thing between you and a hacker. So that's important, and that's a good reminder. Uh, moving on on the new Zappy stat format. So we had uh, some trouble with the stats recently. On the next, on the last release, uh, we update. We made an XCPNG 8.3. It was due to Zappy change and a bug, two things at once. So thanks to the community, to the XLI team and the XCPNG team, we found the problem. We found what to fix. So it was fixed into uh, Zappy and it's also improved in Zen Orchestra and XLite to be to read the new formats of the stat. That was a slight change, but still that broke the stat. So now it's fixed in the latest channel and it's also fixed in XLite and the bug is fixed in Zappy. So everything is done and thanks for the entire community and our own teams. That was really a cross-team effort to, to find and fix it. Not a big problem, but requires a lot of synchronization between people. So that's cool, and it showcased that we could work all together to fix problems. Let's move on on the last part. So there's uh, sorting the Zen Orchestra config backups that could be done in the cloud, so uh, in your account directly. Now they are sorted in the right way from the most recent to the most old one, older one. Uh, it sounds, you know, pretty uh, simple thing to do, but, you know, there's so many things to do that sometimes it becomes a low priority, but at some point when you are trigger that much by the fact it's not sorted correctly, finally you decide to do it. So that's exactly what we did with this feature. Uh, we added new units, you know, petabytes, terabytes. Um, we also modified the vm.container logic to know where the VM is. Previously, it was only when the VM was running or post that we uh, had the container as the host, and otherwise it was the pool when the VM was shut down and so on. But we improved that if the VM got a disk in a storage, a local storage repository to a host, we know for sure it can't run anywhere else uh, than on the hosts, on the dedicated host where the local SR is. And so this way, even if the VM is shut down, the container will be the host uh, if it's the case. So we improved a bit that logic. We also improved the fact that you can now change the MTU of a network, but use it carefully because it generates some load in our uh, support and community because sometimes people change the MTU and forget to do that everywhere on the switches and so on. It is a pretty tricky thing to detect. So adjust it if you really need it, you know, um, because even if you use Jamber frames, the performance gain is in general not that great on modern hardware. And finally, uh, we added a link for uh, suspend VDIs. So if you are on the uh, SR disk view, if you have a suspend image that is named every time suspend image, regardless of the VM, it was confusing to know which one was attached to which VM. Now we got a link directly uh, in the VM part where you can click and know, oh, that's this VM got this suspend image and that's fine. So uh, that's it for this release. I hope you enjoy it um, and see you at the end of March for a new one that will be probably even bigger with more things to announce. So stay tuned. Thank you very much and bye-bye.